So there has been a change to the course, PHP and Five Lessons by Mike, and what I've done, I've actually switched two topics. I was going to originally handle uh, web pages in Lesson 3, but I've decided to move that down and handle MySQL and Content Management in Lesson 3. This makes a lot more sense, and also gives us the ability to do a lot more hacking when we get to Lesson 4. So let's move on with MySQL databases. So we're going to use this as an introduction to PHP My Admin. Then the next uh, series of lessons will be over using MySQL and connecting that to Flash Builder and how MySQL works with PHP. So let's just go through a few sites here. You actually can go take a look at the PHP My Admin site and actually download uh, PHP My Admin, but you don't want to do that because you have already installed it automatically with your WAMP LAMP or WAMP server. Now, what is PHP My Admin? It is a graphical interface that allows you to work with databases. As a matter of fact, it changed my life when it came to working with databases because the way I learned to use databases basically was from the command prompt, and <laughs> that just wasn't working for me. But I have this beautiful interface that does it all for you. It's just fantastic, and I suggest that you get very familiar with it, work with it in your development environment. But what I am telling you is don't put it on your production machine. Because if you put it on your production machine and someone accesses it, they'll have the passwords to all your databases. And then you're sunk because they can go in there and encrypt and change those passwords. And you may lose tons and tons of data, uh, not counting the havoc that can be wrecked upon any business or contract that you might have with somebody. So here's a precaution. Just keep it in mind. But we'll use definitely use PHP My Admin in the development environment, not your production machine. Okay? With that said, let's move on to PHP My Admin. So if you don't have PHP My Admin, you can actually go and download it from uh, www.phpmyadmin.net. And when you do that, there is an installation process you need to go through. There is an installation script. But since we've already got it automatically with WAMP or MAMP or LAMP, we're just going to go with that. So the next thing I want you to do is go ahead and download WARP because we're going to unzip it and install it in PHP Eclipse. So just go to www.wordpress.org and download uh, the WordPress download. And when you do, we're going to unzip it and work with it. Now, WordPress is an extremely popular PHP blog. I have one as well for my professional paper vision site. And we're going to actually learn how to hack it in the future. That will be in Lesson 4. And how to build a Flash interface to the PHP WordPress, just as we've been doing in previous lessons. But that's going to take a little bit more work, so it's actually easier to start with databases. So we're going to start with databasing right now. So go ahead and download WordPress, and then what I want you to do, I want you to unzip it. So once you've downloaded WordPress, uh, go ahead and unzip it, and in the unzip file, you'll find another WordPress uh, folder, uh, and in that are all the WordPress uh, PHP files. So just go ahead and copy that file right there, and paste it right into PHP Eclipse. And bring PHP Eclipse over here, and we're just going to drop it right into Lesson 3, and hit paste. And so you can work with it, just like you would work on any server. And we're going to, first of all, check it for errors, and then we're going to uh, install it. Now you're going to say, check it for errors, shouldn't it be perfect? It's not. We're going to find some errors here, and the reason being is that it wasn't developed in Eclipse, right? Okay. So WordPress has been uh, placed into uh, Lesson 3 of PHP, and uh, we have some errors, as I said, so we're going to track those errors down. And that's how great Eclipse is. It just takes you right to where the error is. Can you imagine if you didn't have something like this, how long it would take to find an error? And I see I've got a little uh, arrow right here. Let's go ahead and just click on that. And I don't like that, so let's just delete it. <laughs> Ta-da, and save. And the error goes away. Ta-da. All right, let's go ahead and find another error. And you see there is still yet another error. So let's go along here and uh, find that error. is in WP includes and let's go down to the error and there it is right there in functions let's click on that and come over here to my little bar on the side and click on my little error bar there it takes me there and let me find that again click on it and there's the error let's highlight that and just delete it and let's save that and then all our errors are gone so at this point in order to install WordPress you've got to have a database for it to talk to. Before we do that, just take a look. There's a number of other uh, popular PHP applications I have here. I have Doku Wiki, I have Drupal, I have MediaWiki, I have PM Wiki, I have TikiWiki, and WordPress as well. All these very popular uh, applications can be opened up and worked with. And sometimes there's source code in here that you can actually take from place to place. And so this whole modularity thing is what we're trying to get into. There's some work that needs to be done here because a lot of this is written in procedure language, not in classes, but we'll fix that. But say, for example, you needed a multiple uploader. Well, guess what? DokuWiki already has one in it. Open it up. And right here in the Libraries folder, in the file is a Flash-based 
multi-uploading system. So if you needed that, you could actually grab that code and just take it into whatever application you want, hook it up, and you have a multiple uploader. And, and we will be building uploaders in this upcoming series. So at this point, we do want to install WordPress, but WordPress has to have a database to talk to. So let's create a database using phpMyAdmin. Now, where is phpMyAdmin? Well, the, what you want to do is come down here to System Tray and click on the uh, WAMP server. And when you do, there is phpMyAdmin. And as I said, phpMyAdmin is a graphical way of looking at and working with databases. And this is so wonderful, because when I first learned databases, it was all in a little command line. This way, you can actually create a database just by typing something in this database and hitting Create. Isn't that fantastic? Let me bring this up. There's a lot in phpMyAdmin, and we'll be going over many of the features as we proceed. Uh, but let's go and just create a WordPress a database. So we'll put WordPress, Press, Lesson 3. And we're going to remember what that database is. Going to copy that and just hit Create. And suddenly, ta-da, I've created a database. And there it is right there, WordPress Lesson 3. Now, there's nothing in it, uh, but we're actually going to have WordPress itself, when it installs, we'll put something in that database. Now, right now, the username is root and the password is blank. And we need to remember that because when we install WordPress, we'll need that. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my PHP Eclipse. And I want to point to WordPress. And in WordPress, there's an index. And that index is going to... In Enable me to install WordPress. So let's go ahead and point to that index. Go run configurations. Lesson 3. Let's open that up and find WordPress. Click on the index and click apply and run. And it says, hey, you don't have a configuration file. So now everything's running just as if you were running right in a browser. So you don't, it says create a configuration file. OK. And it says you need a database name and a database and a password and a host. And we have all that. Let's go ahead and hit uh, Next. Let's go. And now it wants the database name, which I copied, remember? And let's go ahead and paste that. So that's the database name. The username is root in this particular case. The password is left blank. And we are in the local host. And we're only going to have one database on this particular uh, server. So we'll keep it WP underscore. And let's hit Submit. And Run Install. And now it's going to ask you a little bit of information about your wiki. And we'll call uh, PHP Lesson uh, 3 wiki. Here's the admin username. You're going to type a password in. Let's just put uh, 1234. And it's telling you if it's, it's strong or weak. And this is basically just so we can actually do a test here. 1234. And you wouldn't want to use that password, of course, in your email. LivelyM1 at Knights. .ucf.edu. So if you ever have a contract you need help with, hey, send me a line. So install WordPress, and you're done. And uh, we're going to go ahead and log in. And remember, it was admin, and our password was 1234. And I'll go ahead and log in. Never use that password, by the way. We're just using this for ease of use. And I'm writing WordPress. Very powerful. And now I'm running WordPress inside of my WAMP server. And this is so significant that we can do this. Now, let me make something real clear. When it comes to educational applications, everything is about interface. But you have two interfaces that you're working with here. You've got a user interface, that's what your students will see, and you have an admin interface, that's what you'll interface with. And so what we're going to concentrate is on that user interface, using these uh, already made applications to create a Flash Builder interface that is dynamic and good looking. And then go ahead and still using that old PHP interface. And so we'll catch that. As we begin hacking in Lesson 4, right now we're going to get to databasing. So now that we've built our database in WordPress, what we're going to do is now go back to PHP My Admin and take a look at it. Because the install of WordPress actually did something pretty cool. So let's click on our little uh, icon here in the system tray, go to PHP My Admin. And you'll see there's a number of databases that I've created in the past. But here's my WordPress 3. Let's go to that. And suddenly we see all these incredible tables that have been created for us. Yes, WordPress brought all those tables in. And what you can do with PHP My Admin is significant, and it works really well in development environment. And that you can actually surf these tables. You can browse them and see how they were built. And uh, let's just click on one, for example, if there's anything in it. And we're going to go to Browse. And right now there's nothing in that table. But as I interact with my application, I can start using this database uh, phpMyAdmin to check to see if the input was correct, if things were being outputted, if my database is acting the way it should be, and actually use it to tap in and look at SQL commands. Because if you take a look, each time you run a command, because each time you run a command in phpMyAdmin, it actually prints out the SQL language that was used to do that. So 
we're going to uh, really have a lot of fun with PHP, my admin. This is only a short introduction. We're going to be doing a lot with it. And, and just one more point about uh, PHP, my admin, is once you've created a database with all that data in it, you can actually come up here to export and export all that wonderful data into a, a MySQL database again and put it up on another server. And at this point, let's go ahead and review what we've learned in this lesson. We talked a little bit about PHP My Admin, which we'll do a lot more in the future. We downloaded the uh, WordPress zip and unzipped it. We placed that WordPress application in our PHP Eclipse. We created a database for it using PHP My Admin, and then we installed it. So we've got a lot of cool things ahead of us, and next time we're going to start databasing 101. Hey, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively.